Hey everybody, I'm back with another episode of E equals MC squared, where entertainment equals meeples and cardboard, the box is squared. <laughs> Star Wars is arguably one of the most famous franchises from my generation. Many of my friends and I, we grew up with such iconic characters as Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Chewbacca, Princess Leia, Darth Vader. When Fantasy Flight Games released Imperial Assault near the end of last year, I felt kind of like this. <laughs> Today I'm going to answer the questions, does Imperial Assault live up to the hype? Is it a worthy addition to anyone's collection? Well join me for the next few minutes and I'll show you how it's played. As you can see, there is a lot of stuff here. I'm not going to go over everything in detail. I'm just going to focus on what's needed when you actually sit down and play the game, and I just want to focus on the actual experience. This game is set up for two rebels against the Empire. Typically, rebels are given a specific objective, like controlling a certain area, trying to survive a certain number of rounds, searching for a particular item, whatever. In this particular mission, they're trying to secure each of the five terminals. There's one over here, one here, one in this room, and then a couple back in there. So in order to achieve that, the rebels have to make sure that their figure is the only one adjacent to a terminal at the end of a round. The Empire, on the other hand, is usually trying to either defeat the rebels by wounding them, or preventing the rebels from completing an objective within a time limit. In this mission, it's the former. Rebel players are essentially trying to manage two resources, their health and their endurance. When a hero's health is reduced to zero, they become wounded, and then you'd flip this card over, just like that. Now, one thing I think is really clever in this game is that a wounded character's stats and abilities change. You can see here their health is the same, but their maximum endurance is reduced by one. I like how this simulates the character being injured by not being healthy enough to perform uh, special abilities. You can see here they had two abilities to begin with. Now that he's wounded, he can only use the one ability. So far in this mission, the Empire has been going all out on the Rebels by continuously deploying troops and reinforcements. So what he doesn't want is for the Rebels to end up adjacent to these terminals here. Because if they do that, they're securing those terminals and that just gets them closer to victory. Rebel players are the only ones on their turn who can attack twice. Now, what I can do as a rebel is suffer endurance to, or suffer strain to move ahead without actually taking a movement action. And I'll still have two actions left. So if I move Diala up one, two, she takes two strain tokens that's gonna go on her character sheet so now she's in position to do a couple of attacks here I think what I'm gonna try and do is take out this guy here so I've got the dice I'll try to roll him in view but if not then you have to take my word for it so there we go this surge can be used to do an extra damage this guy will suffer two damage put that there uh, we'll do another attack because I want to get him out of the way for a specific reason and hopefully it works alright so that would be two more damage I could use that surge for three but this symbol removes a surge so it's only another two damage so it didn't go the way I wanted it to So I'm gonna explain a little bit about the Empire and how their turn works at the start of a mission, they're given deployment cards. Now, I ended up starting with these four. This is a stormtrooper group, but they got killed already, so when they get killed, you just flip them over. They can be redeployed later on by spending threat points. So these ones are available. The probe droid has already been ex it's already moved, so this card has been exhausted. It'll come back in use next round. So. I think the best thing to do here is attack with the elite guard, the stormtroopers. So the rebels plan was to take out the stormtrooper here at least and hopefully that would have paved the way for Fen to get in here 
over adjacent to this terminal. It didn't happen that way, so well, maybe it was back here, I don't know, whatever. So it didn't happen that way, now the stormtroopers have a chance to get to that terminal and keep the rebels from securing it. So the Empire cannot attack twice on their turn. They can only attack once. So I'm going to move the stormtroopers. They have a movement of four. So let's just go... Oh, sorry. It's a little crowded on this board. One, two, three, four. And I still have line of sight to Diala. I'm going to attack her. Wow. Just take out the door there. Holy cow. Four damage. This means that a surge is removed, but... There were no surges, so let's move this over here, we'll track that. So four damage, wow, that's crazy. So we'll move this guy next. One, two, three, four. Let's put him over here on this side of Diala and we'll shoot her too. Because we're just mean like that. Alright, so this time she actually blocked one, but that surge gives an extra, wow, two damage? Oof. This guy will take his shot at her. It's not gonna go well. Okay, well, three damage. She's wounded now. So let's turn her card over. Wow, this did not go well for them at all. And we'll finish his movement. One, two, three. I think we'll stop there and just block that way so that the rebels can't get in there. Okay, so that was a very successful turn for the Empire. Uh, Fen saw what happened to Diala there, and he's starting to sweat a little bit. He's going to try and make a break for it all the way down here, because if he can suffer a strain and get adjacent to this terminal, he'll have one attack left, maybe take out this guy. At least something will go the Rebel's way for this round. Uh, okay, so I have to suffer one, two, three strain. Alright, so he is tapped out there. He's got no more strain he can suffer. Now his movement is four, so let's go one, two, three, four. Perfect. Right next to the terminal. And his second at action, he's going to attack this officer and hopefully uh, do some damage. There we go. This is what it's all about. You just got to continually change your strategies to see you know, depending on what happens. Okay, that was like the crappiest roll because he didn't do any damage. Wow. Alright, well, this just wasn't the day for the rebels. Alright, this lonely Imperial officer, he's at his best when he's got other troops around him so he can issue orders, but in this case, he's kind of chickening out all himself there. Uh, he's going to do one attack here because he doesn't want to move because if he does move then Fen will succeed in securing that terminal. So I think just a straight attack will do for now. I don't know if you can see these but let's see those surges do uh, plus one damage and oh that's not gonna make a difference there because Fen blocked two of them but he will get to focus. I think this is the focus icon here, which will help him for the next attack. And he's just going to move right back here. So he's still adjacent to that, but it's going to make them maybe have to move up and attack again. So, bad turn for the rebels. Looking good for the Empire. That's an example of the round. Then you just go into the cleanup, do all the cleanup steps, and move on to the next round. I want to talk about combat first because it's a major aspect of the game. Now there's people out there that don't like dice rolling for combat because they say there's a lot of luck and randomness. Well, no kidding, that's the nature of dice. I can understand it's very frustrating if your whole turn revolves around you having to destroy a particular unit and you just end up rolling garbage. That's, you know, you're going to be upset. On the other hand, it's very rewarding when you can make that miraculous roll and you do a lot more damage than anticipated. Both sides experience these highs and lows I mean, I don't mind it because in a way, I think that the dice mechanism, it kind of simulates realistic combat. I mean, it's not what you see in the movies. You see like 13 or 14 bad guys taking shots at the hero and not a single shot lands. 
then the hero, he's like firing from cover, he's going around his back, under his leg, whatever, and he's just taking out guys left and right. Isn't that what always happens? If you don't like dice determining outcomes, then this game is going to get on your nerves. On the other hand, if you like dice and using dice for combat, you're going to love this game because there's a lot of it. The threat system is worth discussing because it's an important part of the Empire strategy. It's a nice, streamlined system which allows them to shape their battle plan. During missions, the Empire will build up threat at the end of each round or in response to certain objectives being completed. This is all recorded using the threat and round tracker. Now at the start of a mission, the Empire will have these deployment cards. Some are going to be revealed right away and some may be kept secret. Now these cards show the types and groups of enemies that the Rebels may have to deal with for that mission. The Empire can spend threat points in order to deploy these cards and bring those units listed into play. So if you wanted, you could spend threat as it comes and just reinforce existing groups and then just try and constantly wear the Rebels down or you could save that threat and then when you get enough you just use it to unleash these really really powerful groups. The campaign is the core of Imperial Assault and I really really enjoy the campaign structure and how the missions are chosen. At the start of the game the Rebels, they make a card deck full of side missions. You can see that a campaign always starts with the first mission called Aftermath. Now afterwards, the missions usually alternate between side mission, followed by another story mission, then another side mission, and so on. Story missions are going to be determined by the winner of the previous story mission. So for example, you can see here if the Empire wins Aftermath, then the campaign guide says that the next story mission that gets played, it has to be under siege. When prompted to do a side mission, the rebels will draw two cards from their side mission deck, and then they choose the one they want to attempt. Now this is where it gets interesting because over the course of the game, the Empire can spend influence points to buy additional mission cards from their agenda deck. Now when these cards come up, the rebels can choose whether or not they want to attempt them, but if they refuse, then the Empire automatically gains the specified reward and usually it's pretty good. There's also forced mission cards that the Empire can just play on the Rebels and just force them to go on it. Now I really love how this system works because you've got both sides shaping the campaign and this way I think that all the players they end up feeling engaged and immersed in the game which to me is a very important factor. It's not simply you know I choose the mission that you go on and then you guys just go along with it. If you have little or no interest in playing the campaign for some strange reason then there's the option to play in skirmish mode. Both Rebels and Empire, they build an army using a point system, and then you can pit them together on the maps provided in the game, or just make your own. The core mechanics of the game don't change, but this is more of a tournament style play. I want to start off by saying that the component quality for this game, just amazing. The miniatures, they look awesome. The artwork is so nice, and it's so thematic. Fantasy Flight Games is known for their high quality and production value, and Imperial Assault is no exception to that. The game is presented very well. The rule books, yeah, I said books. There's more than one here. They're just so well written. I, mean, I can understand if you're unfamiliar with these dungeon crawler type games, you might look at everything that was, you know, that I showed you at the beginning that was just all spread on the table, and you're just like, you might feel overwhelmed, anxious, maybe even frustrated but you don't have to be. The books are so well written and so well organized. They tell you everything you need to know at the start, just for the bare bones tutorial mission. They just tell you what you need to know to get you up and playing right away. From that point on, they just gradually introduce the information in relevant chunks. So you never get this feeling like too much is coming at you. It's so simple and it's very well done. I mean, the only thing that could be better is having the designer come and teach you the game himself. Now, do you have to be a Star Wars junkie to enjoy this game? No, I don't think so. I mean, I like Star Wars, but I'm nowhere near a fanatic. For example, you'll never catch me doing anything like this.
this is a solid game and his theme really pulls you in. I think you'll enjoy it a lot more if you are a big fan of the Star Wars universe, but if you're not, just don't let that stop you from trying this game out. I would certainly check it out. It's a great game. Now with all that said, how might a person feel who's not too familiar with these dungeon crawler type games? To get the most out of Imperial Assault, you're gonna have to spend some time learning it. I mean, ideally, you know, you will have bought the game, you're gonna read through the rules, you'll understand it fairly, fairly well, so you can teach it to new people. But, unfortunately, that also means that, like me, you're gonna be stuck playing as the Empire most of the time. Because you simply cannot expect a new player to come join the game and then have them in charge of setting up the mission and then just controlling all the information in the game. It's just too much for them. At the time of this review, there's a lot of additional content in the way of box expansions and booster packs. Are they essential? The short answer is no, probably not. But you gotta keep in mind, Imperial Assault was made to be expanded upon. If you're a casual gamer, or if you prefer a collection that has a lot more variety, this game might not appeal to you. Fantasy Flight may as well have named this game, just give us your money. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, you certainly get your money's worth, but after you play the campaign a couple times, maybe a few skirmishes, I'd be very surprised if you didn't buy any of the extra content that's available. So back to my initial questions, does Imperial Assault live up to all the hype? Is it a worthy addition to a gamer's collection? As far as I'm concerned, yes, absolutely. This is certainly a game I would strongly recommend, and I know I'm going to be hanging on to this one for a very long time.